Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fair Racer versus the community would see us going racing with open C-Class cars. Round one was at the Road Atlanta Club Circuit. A very, very fast starting Scirocco got boxed in as just so many cars were piling down towards turn one. We all managed to make turn one relatively calm. I snuck by the inside of a Volvo to kind of follow in the cyclone. At this point, unfortunately, it didn't quite last. Someone bounced across the curbs, would spin their car. I think it's like small and light. Uh, spun around off the curbs and unfortunately would take a couple of vehicles with him. But uh, everybody else made it through this opening lap okay as we come to this very, very long uh, right-hander through here. I was carrying great speed in the hold. And these Commodores, there were quite a few of them in this race, Commodores were really rather fast cars as I sweep around the outside of the cyclone and that's where you want to be or put you on the inside for this chicane but it is kind of solidly two by two into the chicane <laughs> a little bit of a hurry up bump from the Nissan I'm stuck on the outside and I get boxed in this time behind a dart and a brat and there's a wheel on the grass and I get mugged by absolutely everyone it didn't take long before the field kind of came a little bit more a little bit more struck out kind of like these long trains were forming I unfortunately would get turned around and dropped down to the other back but other Commodores were, <laughs> were showing their worth as we run up towards the final corner and Nissan's getting brave trying to find a way around the outside of the cyclone and makes it stick as well and that final turn that is a, a brave position to go for an, an overtake the Holden we're following here has a big dive at turn one up the inside of the uh, Scirocco the Scirocco's not giving up yet I mean you can hold it around the outside of turn one it's not the it's not the nastiest of corners turn one here and if you do though you will often get stuck on the outside at the top of the hill which is not really an ideal place the Commodore pushes it a little too much runs across the grass the Scirocco is still fighting back and there's I think it's an eclipse being joining in as they run down the hill but they sort themselves out and everybody gets through cleanly this was a little bit further back a Subaru Brat versus a Honda Civic an unusual an unusual battle between these two vehicles the Brat getting stuck on the outside of that really very very long corner has got pretty decent speed he keeps it there alongside the background of Volvo and a Clio are having a fight they're catching these two are catching up to another Volvo as well down towards the chicane the Subaru goes to the inside just the tiniest of touch the Subaru is sliding he's trying to cut back to the inside of the Civic can't quite get his car in the position that he wants to and then we come up towards this final turn again the Subaru is sliding trying the outside of that final corner is not a position you really want to be in and wisely the Subaru doesn't really force the point you're much better off trying to get a good run out of there get up the inside into turn one that's where the Subaru was trying to put his car I don't think he quite had the brakes to really fight with the Civic in the end the Honda can run it around the outside and will keep hold of the position but all the meantime they're slightly catching up the Volvo with the big old fight going on behind there was a little bit of a, uh, a cyclone train uh, going on. The cyclone was proving a little bit difficult to uh, overtake, so the Holden, the Eclipse, the Scirocco, and now an Alfa Romeo were all uh, <laughs> punched together. That's a pretty nasty-looking pack of cars. While up ahead, the Clio and a Nissan are having a fight. It's three wide into the chicane. The Alfa gets up the inside. There is just not quite enough room for all of the cars. The Scirocco gets brave around the outside and gets hung out to dry and has absolutely nowhere to go. The Eclipse is going to get him back. And while these lot here are all fighting so much, the Cyclone can bugger off up the road. The Alpha's got three of them in, the, in that chicane. The Alpha got past three of them. It'll be his turn to go on the offensive against the, uh, the Cyclone. As I said, I was unfortunate getting spun out and would drop through the field, but me and this grey Commodore were very quickly making our way back up to this rather large squabbling pack. Of course, when they're fighting as hard as they were there, yeah, it's quite easy to make up time when you're running in clean air. The Cyclone was eventually dropping positions, the Eclipse was passed, now the Scirocco was passed, and now two Commodores were coming to uh, to have a go as we come towards this final corner. I may have run a little bit wide out there. It's very easy to do that and get it horrendously wrong uh, on, on the grass here this the Commodore that we're following gets up the inside great run out of that uh, that final turn gets himself to the inside for turn one the Scirocco's on the outside the Cyclone gets boxed in I sweep around the outside of the Cyclone I'm around the outside of the Volkswagen and very nearly get the outside 
of the Commodore as well. This is what I was talking about earlier. You don't really want to be stuck on the outside at the top of the hill. I make it stick, but you have to take such a tight line across the top that uh, you end up being a little bit slow as you come down the other side. I very nearly got all three of them in one corner. I just couldn't quite make it stick. In the end, I think I made a little mistake across the curb that uh, would dump me out a little bit wide. That would put the, uh, the grey Commodore to the front of this group, and I was still battling my way around with a Scirocco. There was lots of good racing with uh, with these cars here at uh, Road Atlanta as we come down towards the chicane yet again. I'm on the inside and there is nothing that the Volkswagen do to fend off the Commodore. At the front, and it was another Holden that was leading the way, but he was coming under increasing, increasing pressure from this Infinity. An unusual card. I don't think we've ever seen one of these runner versus the community before. But uh, yeah, he was up there fighting for the lead with a better run out of this uh, final turn. He gets himself to the inside. I mean, this is a testament just how fast these Commodores are. They were, they were really very, very good cars throughout the field. Uh, the Infinity, though, gets himself to the inside. Would uh, manage to, uh, to get the pass down on the holder. Just couldn't quite do uh, a huge amount but these guys would remain close for, for most of the most of the remainder of the race so uh, yeah the the Commodores had been uh, been an impressive impressive vehicle <laughs> back uh, the uh, the Sylvia gets a little bit on two wheels not really what you want to be doing it's also a very peculiar place to see a car on two wheels you don't normally get cars uh, going up on two wheels through that part but uh, yeah Sylvia gonna be a little bit of trouble for uh, <laughs> for that moment the Clio V6 is having a look at uh, this and can't quite go around the outside. If you can hold it around there, you'll be on the inside for the second part of the chicane. But uh, the, the Renault not quite got the grip to uh, to make that particular move work. So yeah, the Nissan would keep its position. The Sylvias were proving to be pretty damn fast. At the front, and it was the Infinity that would go on to take victory. I think a little mistake from the Commodore would drop him back on this uh, final lap. He threw everything trying to get past the Infinity again, but couldn't quite make it work. Yeah, the Infinity would take victory from the Commodore in second, and I believe an Eagle Talent had a very quiet race, would come home in third. It had been a, it had been a thoroughly enjoyable race, even with a little spin from me. <laughs> it had been a thoroughly enjoyable race. And second race would go to the Silverstone International. Unfortunately, one of the cars uh, would get stuck on the grid. He'd get stuck in the loading screens. And, uh, yeah, that would cause a little bit of chaos further back. Nothing you can do about that when Forza decides to uh, to mess around a bit as we run through these first quarters here. It's always a bit scary on these opening laps when you're going so quickly through these really rather fast changes of direction. The MR2 we're on board with has a big dive up the inside. Gets a fantastic run and kind of avoids everything to uh, cut his way through the order. Further back, I believe it might have been a Lancia Fulvia spun across one of the curbs, again, causing a little bit of mayhem for people to navigate. This uh, MR2 had done a really good job getting up to third from the start, although he was immediately under pressure as we come down this very long straight from an El Camino, as you can imagine. The El Camino, very, very quick car in a straight line. Uh, so, yeah, that would get past the MR2, but as soon as we came into a corner, sorry, got up to fourth, there's another car uh, sneaking around at the front there. Um, yeah, as soon as we got to the corner, of course, the MR2 would find a way back past. These were the battle for the lead. It was between <laughs> an unusual pair of a Mustang King Cobra and a Datsun 510. The Datsun was very, very fast in a straight line, ridiculously fast in a straight line. As you can see from the fact it's still got white wheels on and by just how skinny the tyres are, that's, yeah, pretty much just all power parts of that Datsun and monumentally quick in a straight line. Nothing could touch it down these straights. Problem was, it was an absolute handful through the corners. So, yeah, you can make up huge time on the straight, but the second we get to a corner, here comes the King Cobra again, having a look, trying to get, find a way past. But it is quite difficult because the Datsun can have such a huge lead by the time it does come to the next corners. In the end, though, there was only so much the 510 could do. Uh, trying to keep that car on the road, it was so difficult to get it through the corners that uh, the Mustang would manage to just kind of break the chain, essentially. Could get far enough ahead through the corner so that when it came to the straight, all of that Datsun power just didn't quite work. Again, we're coming up towards turn one here. The Datsun is just that little too far back to really have a look through there. 
Uh, there was a big, big squabble going on <laughs> further back. I was in the thick of it, as was this uh, AE86. There was an Integra and a uh, Cortina. We were all squabbling over position as we come down this back straight. C-Class often produces fantastic races. I always love racing the lower class cars. And especially this evening, uh, there was uh, so much action going on uh, throughout throughout the field. We come down this straight. I go for the inside of this court. I get the inside of the Integra. The, court, the Cortina had run a little bit wide. We all get past him. Uh, I was trying to make a move on the Acura, but that gets me stuck on the outside for this next quarter, which is not... Mm, you can sometimes, if you get it around the outside, because you'll be on the inside for this final corner, but you often find that you'll get hung out to dry a little bit on the outside through the first part. So, yeah, I couldn't quite get the move done on the Integra, and in the end, the A86 kind of runs out a little bit of space. This is much further back outside the top 10, also ignore the slightly lagged out cars on the grid. Uh, yeah, this was a, <laughs> a little bit further back. These guys were having a huge battle. There was a Lamborghini Yalpa, a Camaro, I think there's a Nissan Skyline of some sort, and something else at the back of this little train. We're all fighting for position. The Camaro here, very, very quick. In a straight line, faster than these guys uh, down the straight, but was uh, having a few issues under braking. Just outbraked himself a little bit. That let the Skyline, I think it's another Sylvia, up the inside. They tried to go three wide, and three wide does not quite fit through that part of the track, as the Camaro found out, as he got bumped a little bit sideways. He'd lost some time, lost a couple of positions in all of that didn't really matter too much to the Chevy, despite having a fairly terrible run onto the straight. The power of that Camaro is going to get both the, sky, both the Nissans straight back. He's up the inside of the Lamborghini as well as they come to this next corner, but he doesn't quite have the handling. The Skyline fighting back on the outside, but the Skyline can't quite make that manoeuvre. Hold again, we've got now this short straight that the Camaro can make the most of his power. He's up the inside of the Lamborghini. He's going to run the Alpha a little bit too wide. The Alpha tries to keep himself alongside, but uh, can't quite get far enough there. And the Camaro, despite having been put slightly sideways half a lap earlier, has got past all three of them. So yeah, they were having quite a lot of fun uh, further back at the front, and it would be a uh, relatively uh, quiet race for the Mustang. Once he'd got past the Datsun, the Mustang would uh, would kind of drive away at the front. I would make my way up to second. Was going very, very quickly with the Commodore. I think I got fast this lap of the race, but we just ran out of laps to do anything. Spent too long trying to make my way through the order so that, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the King Cobra would take victory here at Silverstone. Much bigger fight over the third place. You saw the MR2 go exploring out wide. He ran it too wide coming onto this straight, and then all manner of muscle cars would come past the El Camino, and Hemi Cuda was recovering through the field. Hemi Cuda now found himself in fourth, trying to challenge for that third place with the El Camino. The Datsun, MR2, and Integra were all got, I think they went three wide into this quarter, unfortunately. They kind of got tangled together, and we see them all end up going out wide <laughs> on uh, that part of the track. So the third place battle was now just between the El Camino and the Cuda. The Cuda's up the inside, gets a little bump to the El Camino, but he can't get it far enough alongside. He can't shut the El Camino out, so the Chevy is going to have the inside around these final couple of turns, and unfortunately, nothing the Hemi Cuda can do about it, which means the El Camino would make up the podium, and my Holden was the only thing stopping an all-American <laughs> all car podium in this particular race. Our final race would go to the Laguna Seca circuit. Again, turn one down here is uh, an often an interesting, an interesting first quarter. You have quite a quite a quick run into it, really. And often we see everybody trying to go two, three, sometimes even four wide down here. And sure enough, immediately we're trying to fit three cars. The Elise is a little bit, a little bit stuck on the outside there. <laughs> well, at least on the inside, makes up a whole bunch of positions. Yeah, you, know, you really don't want to be hung out on the outside through uh, that particular quarter. The Capri that we're following is now stuck on the outside of a Lotus through this next turn. A little bit of a wheel on the sand there. Someone was brave with an Alpha 155. Never seen the C-Class ones of them particularly work that well. And <laughs> sure enough, the Alpha is uh, off playing on the grass. The Capri gets a cut back on the Lotus at least. Capri's got also very, very good straight line speed down here. He's now on the outside of the Alpha. That's unlikely to work. He's trying to cut back. <laughs> Suddenly there's a Lotus there on the inside. As of course the Lotus is going to be very, very good through the corners. Now everybody's going to mug the Alpha down the straight. Not quite. The Lotus thinks better of trying to make that three wide, which is probably the wise idea. Ford runs around the outside. The Lotus runs around the outside as well. It's too wide up ahead 
uh, in all of that chaos. It was a pretty a pretty hectic first lap, and further back it was equally uh, chaotic. Plymouth Fury, Scirocco, Corvette, Holden, all fighting trying to make it four wide out of that final corner. Holden d does, doesn't quite work for him. Comes off a little bit the worse for wear there. The, <laughs> the Corvette, very, very quick in a straight line. He breezes past the Fury, and the Scirocco is there fighting for position. Corvette's right on the back of the BRZ, as well as they come into turn one. Has it go up the inside? I think Subaru quite realised how close the Stingray was, doesn't quite give him room. There's a little bit bump, they both get through there, though the Scirocco finds out why you don't mess with the Fury, as the Scirocco ends up pointing the wrong direction. The BRZ fights back on the inside, he gets his position back, unfortunately he would then promptly lag out. A little bit of a shame, they're looking like they're going to have a great battle in, uh, in that part of, the, uh, part of the race. Definitely car of the day goes to this... Uh, <laughs> This Willy's Jeep. Now we've seen all sorts of manner of vehicles running in versus the community. Did not quite expect a Willy's Jeep to get up the inside and go past Lotus Elise. That's uh, it's a seriously good handling Jeep, this one. And then up the inside of a Plymouth Fury. And that's up to fourth now. He's just got the Capri ahead of him. He also left a gap and the Elise decided he would join in with uh, getting past the other uh, Plymouth. You can see two Commodores. We were fighting at the front. The Capri's here in third. The Jeep was seriously, seriously fast around the corners at least. In the straights, it was absolutely mugged by everything. You know, you know you're in trouble when a Lotus Elise is going quicker than you. In the in the straights, the Lotus is to the inside, up at turn one, I'm to the inside of the Commodore at the front, uh, it's through, through this first corner. But uh, yeah, the Jeep may have, may have dropped back behind the Lotus momentarily, Lotus pushes it a little bit too much on the exit of uh, that corner. As you saw at the front, there was a massive battle going on between us two Commodores. We were trading places uh, quite a lot. I got myself in a little bit of trouble. I was a little bit too slow uh, around the top of the hill up towards the corkscrew. That allowed the Col Commodore to sneak around the outside and he could get the job done coming through the corkscrew. The Jeep, though, <laughs> he was in the mix. He got to the inside, would make his way up to third getting past the Capri. Capri would fight back, though, through the next quarter. The Jeep couldn't quite make the manoeuvre sticky. He was just lacking that straight line speed as we run up towards the final turn. He's pretty much two by two into this corner. I forced the other uh, Commodore out a little bit wide but can't get the move done. Now the Capri is going to fight to the inside and we saw that Capri had some fantastic straight line speed as we run down towards turn one and I am stuck on the outside which is not really an ideal position to uh, find yourself. You can see how much we dropped the Jeep as well just down that as straight. Capri goes a little too deep under braking, that means I'm going to fight back, cut back to the inside. The Jeep is wanting to follow me through this part, but even if you do get a cut back on turn one, you're stuck on the outside for this next quarter. The Jeep's to the inside of my Commodore, almost again, almost makes the move stick, just doesn't quite have that acceleration, that straight line speed out of the corners, uh, so the Jeep couldn't quite get the third place, but the Capri was uh, clear of me, and he was to go off chasing after the leader, and in all of that, the Plymouth Prowler was now joining back up to us. The second we start fighting like that, very easy to lose that little bit of time. Unfortunately, the uh, the Jeep would have some problems with a very, very twitchy car. Uh, after a bit, of a, mis a bit of a spin coming down the corkscrew, he would uh, drop back, still find himself in in some battles yeah it was definitely a very a very unlikely incredibly fast car the thing with it was that you really had to keep your momentum up as he tangles with a commodore trying to fit too many cars the elise gets the pair of them uh, yeah if you kind of lose momentum in in the jeep because it has so little in the way of straight line speed you can kind of quite easily lose uh, lose a lot of positions as the fury would make his way through the group at the front an unfortunate lag incident would see the capri fired off the track and dropped back from this uh, from this battle for the lead but uh, yeah we were still we were doing this pretty much every single lap this is this is how the uh, how the fight for the lead was going as i got myself to the inside this time as we run into turn one but i just can't quite stop it run a little bit too deep through that uh, first corner, but it doesn't really bother me too much. As as you saw when I was fighting with the Capri, if you run a little wide through turn one, someone does a cutback to the inside. It's not necessarily a bad thing because you can get to the inside for this next corner, and it's very tough to go around the outside of these particular turns. These are not turns you really want to be stuck on the outside of. So once you get to that inside, once you can defend your line, 
that's where you really want to be on that part of the track. But neither of us could really could really break the chain. I was quicker through the second part of the lap. The other Commodore was much faster through this first part of the lap. So we just had this constant battle going on. And now I've managed to get myself stuck on the outside. For the other corner, you really don't want to be stuck on the outside. I have to give space to the vehicle on the inside. And sure enough, he would get the pass done. I tried to keep my car there. And now we come into the bit of the track that I preferred. And this battle just went on and on between us. This constant sort of battle backs and forth between the uh, the lead as we came on to the uh, the final lap a little bit of contact between us two commodores had uh, meant the rest of the pack had caught us the, the capri was back the prowler was there the corvette was in in the mix watching as well as i continued to try and find my way past i tried the outside that is not a normal place to try and get an overtake i gave it a go though couldn't quite make it stick it's absolutely nose to tail as we come up towards this final quarter i was determined to have a go at this last turn he left space on the inside I had a big dive, but I couldn't quite get it stopped. And the Capri gets the cutback on both of us and gets the acceleration. That Ford with such, such good straight line speed would get the pair of Commodores. As we came across the line, I would end up finishing third. Uh, the Prowler fourth, the Corvette in, uh, in fifth in all of that. It was a fantastic final couple of laps with, uh, with these cars. Yet, yeah, certainly the battle at the front was by far the most exciting. Uh, in in this race uh, further back not a huge amount happened until the final lap these guys got very very close on the uh, the last lap an rx7 buzz box and i believe the uh, the subaru brz we were up towards the uh, final quarter there subaru thought about having a go couldn't quite make it work the Mazda ran a little bit wide anyway and now we've just got a drag race towards the line but uh, the subaru not quite got the straight line speed to do too much about the rx7 there yeah the <laughs> the battles at the front were are really quite intense with the uh, the Gula Sega race there. Yeah, these C class cars were a lot of fun. Awful lot of good uh, good action. This one I had a lot of fun with the Commodores. They did prove to be very very quick cars. Those uh, those Holdens. So yeah, a very decent choice of C class car. Anyway, that is it for this week's verse of the community. The next one shall be held on Thursday, the tenth of December we are going to be running a class British cars if you want to sign up and take part then you can go to our forums there will be a link in the description find the Ferraris versus the community section and you can sign up in there but uh, that is it from me thank you very much for watching and until next time uh, goodbye